It is Thursday at 11 a.m., and everybody knows that that means it is time for My Loso Lifestyle with Mary Shep. Mary, why don't you go ahead and give us a real quick recap of last week's show? So last week we did um, What's in My Pantry. We talked about quite a few different things that are in the pantry, low sodium items, some brands that I use, um, and it sparked an idea for me to do a... Um, contest. So all week long, we've been getting likes and shares on my Facebook page, uh, everybody hashtagging DAC Spices because I use them quite frequently. And the um, all the recipes that I posted this week, I, I switched most of my stuff to DAX. So the enchiladas that I made, which I've never actually made low sodium enchiladas, they turned out fantastic. That's all the picture. <laughs> Not going to lie. They turned out, my husband thought that they were absolutely wonderful um so the the other thing i made was a, a quick marinara sauce or a meat marinara sauce pasta sauce whatever bolognese whatever you want to call it it's a red sauce that you put over pasta i made it with pappardelle which a lot of people don't know what that is it's just a giant flat pasta noodle so it's kind of like an alfredo noodle you know but fatter so it's like one inch wide flat spaghetti type noodle they're Oh, they're so good. Yeah. But I, um, we made a bruschetta and then I also did a pico de gallo to put over top of the enchiladas, which I brought some in for Kent today, but he didn't get the pico de gallo that stayed at home. Sorry, dude, you're missing out. Make your own pico. It's pretty easy. No pico for you. <laughs> no pico for you. Um, but I will post the recipes for the enchilada and the pico de gallo later this afternoon. I didn't have a chance to yesterday because... Um, enchiladas are a pretty involved process to make. So I discovered, um, but they, they, it was worth every second of it. Now here's the funny thing. I, I know, right. If I could hire someone, I would, but, um, the, so at the store yesterday, cause I go shopping almost every day. Cause I, I shop or I buy, uh, fresh foods and I cook with fresh foods. It's just easier for me. But I'm thinking I'm going to make enchiladas. I'm going to do it right. I'm not, I can't use a canned sauce because it's too high in sodium. And I'm going through my head of all of these things. I'm like ancho chilies. I'm going to channel my inner Bobby Flay. Cause that, if I don't know if anybody watches Bobby Flay, he uses ancho chilies um, a lot and I can't find ancho chilies. I can't find any chilies. <laughs> they have like jalapenos and poblanos. And that was it. I'm like, okay, so those are fresh chilies. I need like dehydrated or dried or whatever ancho chilies. Can't find them. So I go to the specialty spice rack that they have that I, I frequent. And normally they have a spot for those types of things. And it's empty. Oh. Like literally 50 or 60% of the entire specialty, you know, fresh blended hand packed little packets of spices. Um, they must have expired or something and they cleared out the rack. So half of them are gone. And I see the little spot says ancho chilies. It's gone. <laughs> oh, <hey. laughs> like the one dish, I got everything in my cart to make this. And the one dish, and the one thing that I need to make it truly be an enchilada is ancho chilies. So finally, after staring at the, the normal spice rack section, that's you know, 16 feet of little spice jars. Yeah. Um, I found uh, from a brand that I, I like, a fresh grind um, ancho chili. Of course, it was like $80 million for a little tiny bottle, but it made the dish. You can taste it. You can taste every bit of it in it. It's, it wouldn't have been the same to just substitute it for chili powder or anything else. So it was, it, it ended up working out in the long run, but I was about to get really ticked off <laughs> over the fact that I wanted to make enchiladas. You ever have that? You have it stuck in your head. You're going to make something. I'm going to make apple pie. And then you go in or you want a salad and you go in and they're like, oh, recall on romaine lettuce. Sorry. <laughs> None for you. Yeah. Nothing. Like, yeah. No, and it, yeah, because when you're wandering through the store right. and you've got your list and you know what you want, and because that's happened to me, it's happened to my wife a number of times because you really, really want something and then they just don't have it. Right. And and then you decide, well, I'm going to have to drive another 30 minutes elsewhere or another, or just forget it or just make it without it. And you know, it's not going to taste the same. And I was almost there. I'm literally like, man, I'm going to have to drive all the way to the other side of town because there is a store that I know is going to have it. And 
it's like, I just, I really didn't, I've already run all my errands today. I've ran around like a chicken with my head cut off. It's my day off. I just want to go home and be in my happy place and cook some stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and these stupid freaking ancho chilies. And it's funny because you see these cooking shows and all the time they're, you know, like, oh, you just go out and you get this ingredient, you know, get some whatever and, uh, you know, caviar, or truffles. Yeah, sure. Let me go over to my corner jewel here and see if and, the produce guy knows what a truffle is. get some caviar or a truffle. <laughs> Maybe you know? they've, they've got a store pig that goes out <laughs> and, and digs up their truffles right? specifically for them. It, but, uh, you know, you've got actually Jim Anderson saying good morning here. Oh, hey, Jim. Uh, Alex Kulkowski would like to know, did he win? Kent Jones would like to know, did he win? You guys will find out in a little while. Uh, you'll tell find, you you'll right find out who, you, you, yeah, it's coming up. It's coming up in, in the course of the program. So, you know, the, the, the winner will be announced of the Dax Spices, all 19 of Dax Spice blends. So, yeah, we have, it's, this is, um, this is my personal collection, at least what actually had spices left in it. Uh, I did use some of the chocolate crave in my coffee this morning. Um, not going to lie. It's, it's pretty tasty. It makes like a nice little, and then they have, um, their other one that it makes like a pumpkin spice latte out of your coffee. Mm. It's really good. Mm. Uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll announce that a little bit later. So today we're, we're this has come up before we, we kind of touched on it in the beginning. Um, oh my gosh, that's like 20 weeks ago. Yeah. It's been a little while. It's been a few, few months already. You guys yeah. have been listening to me too, far too long, far too long. <laughs> yeah. I think this, you're right around week between 18 and 20, I have to go back and count. Yeah. So but, yeah. in the beginning, we talked about, you know, what is salt and salt versus pink salt and Himalayan and Celtic salt and, and all of these different things. So the question is, should you, should you get rid of salt completely? Should you use just a little bit of salt? Should you, you know, can you go back to salt? Can you cheat? Can you use salt substitutes? And all of those questions are, are maybe. It really depends on you. <laughs> I mean, it's it's a solid maybe because it everybody's different. Everybody's needs are different. Like you with your your carbs and your sugars and, and your dietary needs versus me Which with I've mine. Which I've been completely ignoring for <laughs> right. a while now. And I, I, I have those moments. Um, my husband and I have a pizza place that we like that I I've ordered from time to time that um, I can feel within minutes. And I will gladly tell you it's 100% worth it because sometimes you just you just got to live life and, and enjoy it. And sometimes pizza's worth it. I'm not going to lie, but um, it, you, anytime you make any significant change in your life, dietary or, or, or otherwise, if it affects your body physically, you really should talk to a doctor. And that comes up a lot in comments and like, Oh, this is a question for a doctor. Well, it doesn't mean you can't get advice from other people that are going through the same thing. But if you decide that, you have symptoms or you feel similar to what I explain or talk about that I'm going through, um, you might just be sodium sensitive or you might be on the verge of having a massive heart attack or liver disease or kidney failure or any one of the other millions of things that cause people to be on low sodium. So if you're going to say, I'm going to cut out sugar or I'm going to cut out salt or fat or carbs or whatever, talk to your doctor, at least go and get blood work done to see what's in your body to begin with, where you're at. My husband years ago had his done, found out he had metal poisoning. What's metal poisoning? What is that? Literally heavy metal, aluminum. Like, like too much, just too right. much metals in his right. blood. Yeah. It was so for, he's, for a he's decade. literally a heavy metal dude. Yeah. <laughs> well, what's <laughs> even awesome. funnier is now with the titanium in his knee from his knee surgeries, he, 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 li he literally is his, part bionic, but oh. um, he worked for, Oh, you're um, married an auto to the place. bionic man. I know. <laughs> kind of. A little bit. I mean, he's, he does have a, a, a lot of metal holding his knee together. Um, but he worked in a, a place that did auto parts. So daily, all day long, eight, ten hours a day, you know, hucking brake parts and stuff on his shoulders and stuff like that. Being around that much metal, um, plus what you consume in a day and so on and so forth, you, things accumulate in your blood. Um, and you, you have to take pills to help eliminate that. And I don't, I, I, I want to say it's ketosis, but I might be wrong. And I, everybody talks about the keto diet, yeah. which the keto diet does serve a purpose for certain things. And I, I want to say that those, it, I could be totally wrong. I'd have to look it up. Cause I wasn't, I didn't research that, 
and it was, you know, like 15 years ago. <laughs> yeah. But you, you don't, you know, he would have never known that. You don't know that until you actually go and get blood work done to see. And just because you, you think you need to eliminate sodium. And a lot of people think that it's directly related to how much sodium is in your blood. So you, my sodium actually runs low now. It's, it's not just how much salt you eat physically in your diet. It also pertains to um, how your actual cellular structure receives the electrolytes in the sodium. So you could be low in sodium because your body doesn't absorb it the way it's supposed to, kind of like someone who doesn't absorb iron this, the way they're supposed to. Hmm. So you, you still need to have your blood tested to find out. And just because you you have low sodium in your blood doesn't mean you can just go out and have pickles all day long and increase your sodium level and increase the sodium in your blood. It, it's not, it doesn't quite work that way. Yeah. See, cause so, I have to, I have to take iron supplements right? because iron carries oxygen and that's what gets oxygen to your brain. And my right. brain apparently needs more than I normally get without it. So, and that that's the same where I have to watch my iron levels um, just because of the way that my internal organs filter everything now it's different. So I have to watch all of those things. My, my sodium levels, my potassium levels, magnesium levels, irons, proteins, fats, all of that, because of how it's absorbed into my body, I have to watch my diet very closely, not just for salt. It's for other things. And it's the same with, you know, anything else. So if you're going to make a change, your best bet is to at least go to a doctor to at least get your blood work done. Because if you think you're not eating or you're eating too much sugar, and you cut your sugar back and you find out that you're, you have diabetic tendencies and you should watch your sugar. And yeah, if you're diabetic, you should watch your sugar and reduce your sugar. But if suddenly you make that change and cut it all out, you could spark something that you didn't know you had. And you, you really need to start first by, by talking to someone who actually knows what they're talking about and not just relying, you know, on people on Facebook. Not that that doesn't, I don't, I see the irony in that because I'm on Facebook, <laughs> but just because I give yeah. advice about what I'm going through or my opinion doesn't mean that, it, you know, you, you shouldn't talk to someone who legitimately studied this stuff to begin with. And I can't tell you what's in your blood. So, I mean, that'd be cool. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know like, yeah. Ooh, Superman you're, x-ray you're, you're vision. Super, you're, super you're a little power. low on your potassium today. <laughs> <laughs> your superpower. That, that'd be a pretty weak superpower. You potassium know? girl. You're low. Potassium girl. <laughs> that, you have a big PG funny. on your, on your, on your, It'd be a, uh, which it's funny because if I was potassium girl, it would be a K, which is for potassium. And my last, my maiden oh, name is kitchen. So it's kind of funny. There you go. Yeah. yeah Cause it, you're right. That's a, the, on the periodic uh, element scale. That is or right. table. Yeah. Sorry. See now my kids know that stuff. I don't. But I have to look that up. Uh, I know enough to sound like I know what I'm talking about, but I don't actually know what I'm talking about. But <laughs> <laughs> see, and see now we got now, a peanut gallery. Yeah, in the we got studio. a peanut gallery. But yeah. I will say that the peanut gallery did bring me my coffee yeah. and a muffin. So well, and it, it's a muffin you made, which they are good. I well, see, it's it's funny because I think uh, you guys liked them, and I think the reason that I wasn't happy with them is because it's supposed to be like a loaf, like a banana bread or a cranberry bread, like a loaf bread. Okay. But because my loaf pan is no more, it died and went to the wayside. Um, I made them as little muffins just to test the flavors in the recipe and see how they were. So the texture of it is wrong for a muffin for me. They're. Well, I mean, it's, it's in a muffin like. cup. Right. So if you put it into me, if, if it's in a muffin cup, it's a friggin' muffin. Right. That's just the way it works. Right. So, but, so but, that's where but, but I get what you're saying. The texture is should be like crumbling and flaky, like a muffin should be. And, that and it's a little dense. Yeah. It's, this is a little more cake like, but it's good. Right. Uh, it's very citrus. What are these, by the way? They are orange marmalade. It's an orange marmalade honey pecan cake. Well, that's why I like it because I like a honey and pecan and, I, and oranges. And oranges. <laughs> I are, like all of those. I things. like all those things. Now, I won't sit down and actually eat an orange. I just don't really do fruit, but I don't mind it when things like oranges and other certain types of things show up inside of things. Right. Especially if they're inside of bread things. But these, these are really very good. No one can really see that from yeah. over there, I'm sure. But 
you know right. what I mean? Like if you slice that as a loaf and put some butter on it or something, it would it then it would make more sense to me. But I'm I'm very much about textures. But it was an, it's a it's got a nice thick so, texture yeah. to it, and my my stomach's been a little iffy lately. Uh, but so it actually felt good on my stomach oh. today. So oh, that's good big, because I had just eaten some stuff I shouldn't have eaten. Well, so. I, I try and even with that. So it's funny because it, yes, those are low sodium. I use the Rumford um, reduced sodium aluminum free baking powder, and then the featherweight. Um, it's energy featherweight, no sodium baking soda, which is actually calcium chloride, I think. But uh, I cut the sugar. So instead of adding a ton of sugar to it, I use honey. So it adds mm. the sweetness. And even though honey is still sugar, it, it is better for you. No, but I love honey. I really do. I like honey I, a lot. I use it a lot more now than I ever did because watching my salt and, of course, inherently, I started watching everything and added salts, added sugars, all of those added things um, take away from the benefit of eating whole foods. So I'm not some, you know, you got to do this, you got to do that and blah, blah, blah. But the I am a proponent of, of eating just real food. Mm -hmm. It's I don't watch my calories. I don't I, I, I try and put as many real ingredients as I possibly can. So that doesn't mean that you can't get canned goods or spice blends or things like that. But like chili powder, a lot of chili powders have salt in them because mm. it's a blend. Well, yeah. yeah so I a chili powder is typically a blend of different chilies and different spices. And then they add salt and anti-caking and blah, blah, blah. So you just got to pay attention to what the ingredients list is. But I started watching everything. So inherently I said, you know what? It's probably a good idea to reduce the amount of sugar that I consume added sugars. So whenever I cook something, I try to use a honey or a fruit juice or something of that nature to, to bring in the sugar versus just using, you know, granulated sugar. sugar. So, yeah. um, and it's, yeah. but it's, it's good helped tremendously. For me. You, did, you did a good job. So other or, than talking correct. to a doctor, you need to track your food. Um, I I've said it before. I'm going to say it a million times. If you're talking about whether or not you can have a little bit of salt or no salt or any of those things, how do you know what you can have if you don't know what you're putting in? How do you well, know how yeah. if you need to cut your sugar, if you don't you, know how much sugar, you might you think you're eating a lot of sugar until you track it. And then if you track your food and go, okay, I eat really good the rest of the day, but I have a venti Starbucks pink something or other unicorn whatever freaking cocktail they make yeah and i just had six days worth of sugar in one drink well mm -hmm. i you know i have salads for lunch and i have this well you wonder why you're 400 pounds because you eat good all day long but you started your day with 75 milligrams <laughs> of added sugar right in a drink yeah which means your body absorbs it really fast uh, how many of those drinks do you have a day? because people right. don't think about that the, like a drink is they are loaded, loaded, loaded with with sugars and all kinds of stuff. And <laughs> Alex it, says, thank yeah. you so much for choosing me to win your spices. You truly are my hero. Yeah. Well, I didn't choose you to win my spices. They are not my <laughs> spices. They are Dak spices. Um, I'm just, you know, giving oh. them away to people. And I haven't announced the winner yet. The winner will be announced in about 40 minutes. Yeah, he's he's lobbying hard. But right? uh, she already knows who it I is. I already know who the winner is. So. And but, I'm the only uh, one that knows. She is so the you're only one that not going to get it out of anybody. So, uh, yeah. So, and Nicole Vaughn says, hey, a little late. Hello, but Nicole. But there you are. Better late than never, right? Yeah. So, but that's the thing is you, when you, when people talk about eliminating things or they say, I'm going to do the keto diet. And I have some friends of mine that do the keto diet and they do it well because that's one of those diets that, that can seriously hurt you because of the way that it shifts everything from fats and sugars and proteins, it, it changes, it puts your body in a state of ketosis. Mm -hmm. So that's not necessarily a bad thing, but it can be rough on your organs. So if you have liver disease like myself or kidney disease or something else, and if you're doing it wrong. So if you read a paragraph on Facebook, because somebody else said, do a whole 30 diet or do a keto diet or do a cabbage soup diet or Mediterranean diet, any, <laughs> fucking, yeah. every diet that they know, there's about a billion of them on the planet. You can find anything. Um, 
and you you think that you that's all the research that you did and then you go on and you you go on this diet and then all of a sudden you end up in the hospital with organ problems because you you completely shifted the paradigm in your body and it's maybe you're not genetically made for that maybe you already had borderline liver or kidney or whatever disease and your body just went okay now it's full blown because you know, but unless you track your food to know what you're doing you know, if you're, if you eat nothing but pasta, you're going to find out your sugars are way up there, Yeah. but you'll be the person that says, well, I don't eat chocolate. I don't eat ice cream. I don't eat this. But if you're eating all those carbs that convert to sugars, you're, you're still doing the same thing. Yeah. And the opposite is true. That's how I wound up with, uh, you know, inviting the gouts over. Mm -hmm. It was uh, just uh, incredibly uncomfortable because all I did was like no carb, low carb. Like uh, I tried to stay under under twenty grams of carbs, always, which is really low. Always, which is really low, and and I did drop a lot of weight. Now I've found some of that ever since the gouts came over. And um, I love that you and, talk about them like little troll cousins well, that just come to visit every couple months. That's what they are, like the unwanted uh, in laws yes, that you don't yeah, want. Like I'm going to have to deal with it for well, a couple days. See, you know, I'm lucky though because my in laws away. are freaking awesome. Same here, but, but I mean, you but know yeah, what I mean? you know, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's these little, but yeah, the gouts are, well, they can't, well, they settled in my freaking heel and it, it, it makes don't it feel, really hard to it walk does around. not feel yeah. good. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm not, I'm not that freaking old. Well, it, it's got nothing to do with how no. old you are. Zero to do with it. I did nothing but eat meat and uh, red meat at that, like right. very little other than red meat. And because I, I actually really love freaking red meat, I just do. And it was easy Same. for me, but now, you know, I, I got to get up off my ass is what I got to do. So that's what's funny is, is uh, by tracking my food, um, the A, I tracked everything and I, I paid attention to how I felt. So to be honest, I first I fasted. I cut everything. I drank nothing but water, 100%, all honesty, no coffee, no tea, no soda, no pot, no nothing. Nothing but water. And I lived on grilled plain chicken and potatoes. And after about a week, um, I afforded myself the luxury of shredded cheese. The luxury. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> but no, also, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. At that point, I mean, and I get it. You know, not everybody's in my, in my shoes. Like right. you're not on death's door right now. No. So to have the motivation to make that kind of change of commitment, it is not an easy one. And I'm not saying that it is by any means, but it, it was necessary for me to do and achieve what I achieved. And if you, if you really want to achieve something, sometimes you just have to go to that extreme. Um, and I, I was, I, I was in full blown, you know, organ failure. I had liver disease with ascites and I had two paracentesis I had, which is a, a process where they drain the excess fluid. So it's like seven liters of water just sitting in my gut that they drained out. But that first week, you know, 15 medications and they're going, the, the survival rate of somebody with your advanced level of cirrhosis is like 50% in the first year. Man. So that's, that's a heavy hit to take. And yeah. I said, okay, I can't really eat anything. I can't do anything. So that's, I think the only other thing that I did was uh, there's these little lemon cello ice cup things. It's like a lemon ice. They were zero sodium. I'm sure it was literally a cup of sugar frozen with lemon flavoring but i was living <laughs> I was living on mashed potatoes with no seasoning and chicken with no seasoning so that that was my luxury at yeah. the end of the day i had a little lemon cup um oh, but once i got past that part and i was tracking my food and looking at it and saying okay with chicken and potatoes I'm way high on my potassium and I had to talk to my doctor and back back down because I was on potassium sparing water pills, which meant my potassium was getting too high and I was getting cramps and headaches and all these things. So I had to find that balance. But by fasting and eliminating everything as I added things back in, then I discovered things that were bothering me. Now, something like tomatoes, all of my levels were perfectly fine. My nutrients, my magnesium, my potassium, my iron, my fiber, the whole nine yards. I had everything super balanced. And I had a week where um, the tomatoes were ripening in our garden. Mm -hmm. So we had made, I made a, and I love it. It's a green tomato and zucchini gratin, like scalloped potatoes, you know, with breadcrumbs mm -hmm. and everything and cheese. So we had 
tomatoes for dinner with chicken. And I had tomatoes at lunch because we had fresh tomatoes in our garden. But we had a week where it was just tomato, tomato, tomato. And I all of a sudden, my allergies went ballistic. Mm. So I did a little research, come to find out I am nightshade sensitive. So that's not something that you can track. You, can, you can't track the milligrams of nightshade that you take. But tomatoes, zucchinis, things like eggplants, um, all of those flowering type where you get the little tiny flower, big flower, and then it gives you a fruit like tomatoes or zucchini. Those are mostly nightshades. And if you're sensitive to those, it, huh. A, it loads your body with histamines. And what do you take when you have allergies? Antihistamine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you load yourself with tomatoes and histamines and you have allergies and then you go out and somebody has a cat or it's hay fever season. You're going to have you, a bad you, time. So I was like, holy crap, I love tomatoes. But now if I monitor that and watch that, so I know if I get a headache, oh, my potassium's off. If I do this, if I'm tired, I need iron, you know, all of these things. And it's amazing that when I get beat down, something so simple as a banana and it boom, it's I'm good for hours hmm. because of the way it's balanced. Whereas if you have a smoothie or something of that nature and you just load yourself with sugar, you get a spike and then you get a drop. You don't get the fiber and you're off and you don't yeah. go to the bathroom right. Like all of these different things. So how do you know if you need to cut sodium or sugar or, you know, fats or proteins or fibers? I can guarantee you anybody that you ask, if you ask them how much fiber they eat in a day, they would have no clue. Yeah, <laughs> And it's specific, I kid you not, not yeah. to, I, I suppose I've shared enough at this point, but if I'm right around 23 milligrams of fiber in a day, I, my, my gut process in my bathroom process is spot on. I'm kidding. And it sounds so stupid, but it's literally just but the amount you know, of fiber. You know. So if I don't yeah, have fiber or well, see, and, and I've too told much you before. or too little. And it's amazing how something so specific like that, if I go to 26 milligrams or 20 milligrams, it completely throws off everything. And then I get gut pains. I get upset stomach, you know, and, and you like, oh, I ate enchiladas last night. It must be, must be the spicy enchiladas. No, it's my entire diet as a whole. It screwed me up And that balance. It's amazing. Once you track your food and you know what you're putting in, mm. everything else balances out. Yeah, it worked. and see, I've told you before, my grandpa, my, my mom's dad would always say that his solution to any problem, no matter what it was, was you need some more bran. Get the bran in there right. for your, for that fiber. You'll be fine. And now that and, we don't grind our own flour, like we talked about on milling your own flour, yeah. you don't get the bran that you need. You don't get all of that out of your flour and your baked goods because it's all processed. And, and that bread was so good. It, I, I So I have a sourdough bread. If it turns out, I'll be bringing it in next week. Mm. Um, I got to go and get some more flour from Kim because I don't have a mill in anything yet. So Kim has been, <laughs> Kim's been my flour dealer. <laughs> <laughs> she lives like eight minutes from me. So it's awesome. I could just like shoot her a text message. And be like, Can I get another my, bag of flour? <laughs> and it sounds like I'm going to do you a holding? drug deal. You hold it. I need hey, to get go. another bag from and you. I, I go get three <laughs> pounds of flour and come home and bake something with it. It's, it's pretty funny. It's The di dichotomy of that is just <laughs> hilarious to me. Meet me in the parking lot. Right. You know, shh, don't tell anybody. <laughs> I got to go get my flour fixed. <laughs> but I got to do a sourdough starter and I've never done it before. And it's, it's literally a living thing. A and living, what, like organisms? Sourdough, or? Yeah, sourdough starter. It's you, you, you essentially take a hunk of bread uh -huh. or dough or flour or whatever, and you mix it with some water and, and, and just let the natural yeast and bacteria, whatever in there, um, grow. Ew. And it, it turns sour. It's, it's a living organism. Huh. And that fermentation process is a controlled fermentation and it, it, it's what gives sourdough its flavor. So if you don't have salt to give it its flavor, but you have that sourdough to give it that bubbly, fresh, um, like yeasty kind of sourdough that everybody. So that's does. actually the sour flavor is bacteria. Uh, it's a, yes, a controlled fermentation of the yeast product. So it, it allows that yeast to grow into um, an actual living organism and then you bake it. And that's, that's, and any, even with, Plain that old sounds meat. so gross. <laughs> well, penicillin. I know, but I don't want to eat it. Do you like blue cheese? 
not re- well i mean yeah i mean i know blue cheese is fungus yes but you know most cheeses i most try not cheeses. to think about it and i know that in most most sausages and pepperonis and such that you know you have earth obate and i right. know exactly what that is hams and all these uh, you know the the salt cured products um pickles all of those things it's it's um, soy sauce, they're all controlled fermentation processes. Yeah, and Mark but, Stewart says you'll have to share that oh, sourdough recipe Mark. if absolutely. it turns if it it says if it turns out good. So <laughs> well, I'm hoping to do two. I want to do um just a straight up sourdough loaf and I want to do a jalapeno cheddar sourdough. Yeah. So see, and you can say jalapeno cheddar and stick it on anything. I'll probably eat it. Well, this is true. So would my husband. Um, he's, but I, I, I'm going to make a couple of them, but I, the problem is, is it's sourdough. Isn't something that you can make on a whim. Like those muffins. I decided I was up early. I wanted to make muffins this morning. So I made muffins this morning. It takes mm. 15 minutes to throw some stuff in a bowl and mix it up. And it takes another 15, 20 minutes to bake the muffins. So when people say you don't have time to cook while my coffee was brewing this morning, you made, a muffin. I made muffins and then you brought them here right and apparently awesome. they were pretty good so by the way nicole bond says gross she's never <laughs> eating sourdough again omg <laughs> well that's like so sourdough that fermentation process to make sourdough and, and bakeries that have and sell sourdough like good chicago bakeries new york bakeries all these places um they their sourdough is a living organism that they feed all the time and it never i mean they'll have it for same with balsamic vinegars in italy they have them for generations Mm. and if somebody kills their sourdough because it's like wine it's based on the environment that it's in so you can't get that in another bakery you can't just go and make it it's the 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 atmosphere in that bakery, it's the mold, it's the everything, it's the whole nine yards, it's the temperature, it's everything so in that bakery. you're literally tasting sourdough. the bakery. Essentially, yeah. Yeah. And that's where if you get a really good sourdough and some people are like, I can't eat it from there. Pizza, same thing. P- pizza places that, that ferment their dough overnight or for days and you get that nice chewy texture to the, the pizza dough, it's that long drawn out yeast process Mm. that makes it fantastic so sourdough even on a simple level it's going to take me a few days to make the actual sourdough mark stewart again asks uh have you tried the yeast with the sourdough mixed in with it where you just use it as you would regular yeast without having to make the starter i have actually the uh if you look at my page um the the loaves, the long um, sub looking loaves that I made the other, what, last week or the week before, those used that sourdough that he's talking about where it's already pre-mixed and it's like a sourdough thing. You just use it like you would use yeast. And the bread was good, but it wasn't, it wasn't the same without adding salt to it. That flavor component wasn't there. So normally when I make a bread, I add a roasted garlic or something to enhance the flavor because the salt usually enhances the flavor. And since I can't add salt to it, I got to I gotta enhance that flavor another way. Hmm. And that's what I'm hoping to do with the sourdough is that sourness, that, that tang is what's going to give you that punch of flavor so it doesn't just taste like cardboard. Um, but I did try that stuff. So it worked and it worked well. And if I could add salt to my dough for those that can, it would be great. But... Uh, you know, I, I prefer not to. So, hmm. um, but yeah, so by tracking everything, I, I was able to see where I was short, where I wasn't balance out my diet. And then after about six, eight months, um, and this, that process is going to be different for everybody because obviously if you're cutting sugars and not salt, you're, you're going to be looking at a different balance than I am. Genetically, if you're different, um, different societies, if you're raised, you know, if your bloodline has been raised on meat and potato all your life and you switch to vegetarianism, it's going to screw your system up because your body has been conditioned over years and generations to process things a certain way Hmm. and vice versa. If you come from a line that predominantly eats vegetables and soys and soybeans and and things of that nature and occasionally has fish and all of a sudden you start eating red meat, it's going to screw you up. Mm -hmm. Everybody has a different balance. But by fasting and tracking my food, that's how I got off all of my medications. And when doctors laughed at me and were like, yeah, okay, we'll see how you do. And then we'll see what medications we can reduce, not take you off. And I was like, well, 
well, no, we're going to, we're going to take me off all of them. And that's what happened at about the year mark. We started reducing all of my medications and about a year and a half, I was off all of them. I still only have three to 5% of a functioning liver, but because of that balance, I am afforded the luxury where if I do want to go out with my girlfriends and have dinner or have a pizza or do whatever, or if I want to put salt, um, like the pink salt on tomatoes in the summertime, I can afford to do that. I still don't salt my food. I don't add any salt to anything, any of my cooking. Because me personally, if I'm if I'm going to add salt somewhere, it's going to be cheese. It's always mm-hmm. going to be cheese. People yeah. have told me like, oh, you don't have to make this recipe that low in sodium. I, I do because I'm I'm going to I'm going to put a mound of cheese. <laughs> so, my, so my chili is really low in sodium <laughs> but, because it's going to have a pile of cheese on it about this big. Yeah. And then some onions on top. Yeah. So in order to afford that, that big old hunk of cheddar cheese. I got to make it that low. And that's the best way to have right. chili. I mean, I love cheese on my chili. I like an extra, I like a little extra sour cream on top of that too. I, I like, right. I like, uh, the, the cheese. I do like green peppers in my chili, uh, and the onions and then a big blop of sour cream on top. And and that right. is a perfect bowl of just, especially when my wife makes the chili from scratch at home in the crock pot, then it's freaking awesome. Mm-hmm. But, and that's the thing. Yeah. So if I, if you afford yourself those luxuries, and so when people say something about, you know, grilled cheese sandwiches, because I, I love grilled cheese sandwiches. I absolutely love grilled cheese sandwiches. So if I make my own bread, I can have a grilled cheese sandwich. Because, you know, two, three, four, five hundred milligrams of sodium is in the bread alone. Mm. So if I make the bread, um, oh, hey, Terry. Uh, if I make the bread and it's zero sodium, then I have the luxury of putting two or 300 milligrams worth of cheese on it. And I can have a legitimate grilled cheese sandwich with a couple cold tomatoes in there and some onions. And it's a fantastic sandwich. But the cheese combined with everything else is what makes it impossible to have. Yeah. So, and you can find, I mean, obviously everybody in our world is, thinks they're reduced to, um, Swiss cheese. And there are some cheddars and stuff that you can find that are lower. Uh, mascarpone is lower. So if you're ever looking for a creamy cheese. I don't cheese, mind Swiss cheese. I, I, don't, I actually kind of forgot about Swiss cheese. I don't mind it. Yeah, but when you live on it and you think that's the only cheese you can have in the low sodium world, you start you get sick of wanting it. everything else. Yeah. Um, and it's funny, Terry, because we were talking about that on our mill, milling flour show about gluten and, and how milling your own flour actually reduces the gluten content in the flour because of all the other brands and, and things that are in the flour. Um, so the, the thing about it is that people, you get this conception that, that salt is evil. Can't have salt. Got to have no salt. Got to be on low sodium or gluten's evil or sugar's evil. And it's not. A lot of these things are necessary for life, but it depends on the reason why you shouldn't have them. So like Terry, for instance, he can't have gluten. He's not a you know, I'm not going to be on the gluten-free wagon because I, I need to be healthy and whatever. It, it's a it's a medical need for some people. Yeah. Um, the same with me, with my liver. It's a medical need for me to watch my sodium for more than just the, the fact that I retain water. Um, but then it's a balance because if you get rid of one thing, chances are you're getting rid of something else or you're getting too much of something else. Or you're substituting it for something that's just as bad. Like sugars. You get rid of sugars, so they put a bunch of fake sugars in there. And see, that's and that for me was almost a really, really bad dead time. Right. You know, you get the fake stuff in there and that, that but Do you know I, that I, most yeah. bugs won't even eat like aspartame and stuff. They'll yeah. walk right around it. Yeah, like as like, aspartame. Doesn't that tell you something? Yeah. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> if the cockroaches won't eat it, maybe oh, we shouldn't. And, eat. and some of those, and even to this day, if if I get a hold of, you know, saccharin or uh, aspartame or something, I can still feel it. Right. Luckily, you know, through dietary chain, a change for, I think it was, it lasted like a couple of years, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it, my body adjusted and, and now it's not as near as threatening as it once was. Right. But, um, you know, I still, I don't, you know, anything that's high fructose, 
I, right. you know, they put high fructose corn in syrup everything. in every friggin' thing. It really did. And if you have a corn allergy, oh my gosh. Well, and yeah, it was an I there's something that happens at the super high temperature with with that where it converts one of the chemicals and certain people can turn that chemical into a neurotoxin. Mm-hmm. That's what my body does. Right. And so I have to be yeah, I somewhat mindful, not near as of now. I can tell when it when I when I've had a bit too much of something like that. Uh it, it's you start having a really bad day. Right. And so you okay, no more Twinkies for for Pete <laughs> this day. But uh I, I freaking love they Twinkies. They discovered a lot of that. Um, oh Lord, I love Twinkies. When they were shipping stuff overseas. Hey Rick, how you doing? And they it was but the aspartame that's in a lot of pop soda because it would get warm and cold and warm and cold and warm and cold and whatever. And it got overseas and um, a bunch of people got sick from it. And it was the same thing. Like people discovered that they had what you have because of the aspartame being heated and cooled and heated and cooled and heated and cooled. And then it caused this issue with them once they had it. Um, But it, it doesn't necessarily mean these things are evil, but again, if you get rid of one thing, you you might need to add another, mm. or if you add something, you might need to get rid of something. So that balance, it, it really is key. Um, it's not easy, but it, it it is key because it once you balance what you're consuming, your body can eliminate just about everything. Even with me with a broken liver in a bum body, it it can eliminate just about everything. My problem is that it does it at a slower rate. Yeah. So if I back it up too bad, it will it will stop again. It'll flat bone just say, you know what, no more. This is done. Done. Yeah. And it then I end up back in the hospital and I need medical help to get past that blockage. But same with anybody else. If once you find that balance and it's funny to me because a lot of people have a balance nutritionally and I've talked to them, you know, I eat great. I I eat this. I've tracked my food and everything still sucks. Well, your life is toxic. (laughs) The the amount of damage that stress hormones and the chemicals in your body they, they still cause massive amounts of inflammation and problems um, because those hormones were meant for, you know, flight or fight or flight situations, not necessarily, you know, my, my boyfriend's an asshole. <laughs> so, right. so if you have yeah. this, this toxic situation that no matter how well you balance your food, so it's, it's the same with everything. You got to balance it across the board. And again, it's not easy, but you, you kind of have to, if you want that, you need to make the conscious decision. If you want to be better, then you have to, to write it down, create a plan and stick to it and move forward and you will be better. But if you're going to lie to yourself and say everything's peaches and cream, then I, I don't want to hear your sob story because it's your own freaking fault that you're in the situation or you end up in the hospital every two weeks or, you know, it's. I'm sorry that this, that, or the other happened to you, but if you're not going to help make the change, and if it's something that you can't get a change for, if it's an addiction problem, then obviously you're going to need some outside help to get through that. But but it's up to you as a person to right. do that. Right. And if you're not going to help yourself, you know, what's that old saying? God helps those who help themselves. Right. My, my grandfather used to say that all the time too. And But, uh, you know, it's do something. Right. Yeah. And that's when it, like, so one of the things that I, about the name of the show was shortcuts. And in my mind, there, there really, there really isn't any shortcuts because usually, like we just said a minute ago, when there's, when you find a shortcut, it, it's almost always a substitution and it's just as bad as the original. Right. So when you want salt and you got to cut salt and you immediately look for shortcuts, there is no get rich quick scheme that works. There is no shortcut that's going to make you a billionaire overnight unless you win the lottery. There's, you, you know, that it's, do people get lucky? Sure. But th- there's no it, it substituting salt for fake salt because it's potassium chloride. And now you got to watch your potassium levels. 
And to me personally, some people, I've, we talked about this, I think it was last week or the week before about taste buds. Mm-hmm. Um, I can taste the metal and potassium chloride and it tastes like I'm eating pennies and it's gross. Huh. Some people can't. It just flat out tastes like salt to them. Good mm-hmm. for you. And if you're okay with, you know, potassium, then, you know, by all means, I'm not saying that you can't have it, but it's just another thing that you have to watch. So if you can have salt, then great, have salt. Just watch it. Because if you're wondering why you're swollen and puffy and holding on to 10 pounds of water weight, it's probably the sodium. Same with sugars. Mm. I'm going to cut out sugar and you're going to eat no sugar added stuff because it says no sugar added on the label. Well, well, then when just, you look at the ingredients, there's sugar in it. There's still sugar. Yeah. I just, they just didn't put any extra right. in. Right. So. Yeah. So, and that's the thing is the, the shortcuts typically tend to be a substitution. And that substitution a lot of times ends up being just as bad as the original causing just as many problems. And then you have to, you know, watch and balance a whole other host of things simply because of the fact that you you're trying to find an easy way out when yeah. you just need to be honest with yourself and say, okay, I'm going to suck it up. And if I'm going to cheat, I'm going to cheat and I, I'm going to plan it like me with my cheese. I'm not giving up cheese. It's just not going to happen. It, you know, it's bad enough. And it's funny when, um, you know, months later and I, I go to visit the doctor or whatever. And he says, I don't, I don't think you're ever going to drink again. Well, no shit, Sherlock. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Next. And Next. I said, you, I'm a cook. I yeah. love to cook. It's my happy place. And you took away salt. Tell me what show doesn't use salt by the handful. Like here I'm thinking I could take yeah. some culinary classes. How am I going to pass a culinary class if I can't? What is every single exam teacher going to say? You need to add salt. Yeah. This yeah. needs salt. Yeah. And it's <laughs> never going to happen. Of course it does. Right. But not for you. Right. I'm going to so. fail. And obviously you've tasted my food. I found ways around making food taste yeah. good without it. But you, you know, the, the shortcuts, you know, that, that potassium chloride, it's just not good stuff. And I know you need potassium, but you get it just fine from your foods. And there are some people who are super picky eaters and they don't have a varied diet. So when you eliminate something, and we talked about this on another show about iodine. So if you eliminate table salt and you don't have a varied diet, Mm. so if you're, you're eating just crap food or the same thing, you know, if you're eating pasta with butter all the time, you're probably not getting enough iodine. And that's where, again, we talked about this on another show. Iodine was added because during wartime, there people in certain parts of the country we're living literally just off of potatoes or whatever they could get. And without having that varied diet, they didn't have milk and eggs and all these things that got them the iodine that they needed um, that, you know, caused problems. So you still have to watch because yes, the majority of people don't need to watch their iodine. They get it in plenty of their food. Mm -hmm. But if you're going to eliminate something, chances are you might be eliminating something else that you need to watch or getting too much. So we, you, it's again, that balance, you yeah. know, the, and you got to, and you've got to read, right. You have to. And I know we've talked about that before. The nutritional label versus what the ingredient to. list is. Yeah. Cause even though like if something says, Hey, made with real sugar, cause I had to look for stuff that right. was, you know, real sugar, real sugar, this real sugar, that, but if it just says made with, then you read that label, you'll discover that, yeah, it's got real sugar, but it also still has all the crap I'm not supposed to right. have. Right. And just not as much because they used some real sugar and that still doesn't work. Right. So, and the same with salt. I mean, even now I'm looking at labels just because we've, you know, been sitting here with you for so long and it's surprising how much salt is in stuff. Mm-hmm. And you're like, huh, I, I, this, this probably doesn't need extra salt. Well, that's the other, you have to watch when you are doing um, like foreign ingredients. So if you're in the Asian aisle or the Hispanic aisle, like what if you're in an aisle that is not U.S. and then it's converted to U.S. So if you're reading it and it says five milligrams of sodium and then you read the ingredients list and salt is the first thing or the second thing. They list them by weight. So if salt is barely in it, it's going to be one of the last ingredients on the list. If there's a 
boatload, you know, 22 million pounds of salt in there, it's going to be one of the first things on the list. So if, if when you read the ingredients list and go, okay, it's li labeled number one, but then the sodium is lower than everything else on the nutritional spec, it, you, you, there might be something lost in translation and you might want to send a message to the vendor. And a lot we've, in our low sodium groups, we found that more often than not, that there's a lot of times where there's a mistake simply because it's, it's lost in translation. Cause when they go from metric units to us and whatever, and so on and so forth, that the decimal gets moved the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. And instead of saying 500 milligrams, it's 0.5 milligrams and you can flat out taste it in the product. And you're like, yeah, yeah, no, I think this is salty. But if you listen and if you, if you read the ingredients, then you'll find out that, you know, you're, you're one. Hmm. So speaking of labels and whatnot, um, one of the other shortcuts that a lot of people is rinsing your food. We talked about this briefly. Um, I forget what show it was, but a lot of people think that you can simply rinse your food off. So if you get a can of, you know, green beans or corn or peas and they're salted, like most things in the canned goods aisle yeah. are. And again, people think that you can get away with uh, frozen peas and green beans and that they're not salted, and they are. They're blanched in salt water and then frozen. So you have to look at that label to see that they're salted. So people think that you can just rinse that can of green beans and you rinse the salt away. So it's partially true. Does it rinse some away? Yes. So if you eat the beans and liquid, which I've never done. I've always drained the liquid off. Yeah. Um, and I think most people do. They don't really, you know, you don't drink the liquid that's in the corn can. No, you, you eat the corn. Cut the, the right. can, the lid, and you drain it, it off upside and, down. Yeah. And yeah, and then you, yeah. So, unless it's cream corn. Right. Well, yeah. But, you know, they think that you can rinse it off. And so I posted on my page and I shared it in a couple of the groups um, from the, the, research institute that does research and testing for the USDA. And they, they did all these tests because it's a common question and it's a dietary thing and it's a nutritional thing and putting nutritional specs on labels. So on average, it reduces. So it's looks like between nine and 23 Um, from the drained solids. So like, a, let's say, what is this? A can of green beans. The actual solids, the green beans themselves, go from 231 down to an average range of 211 to 268 milligrams. Hmm. So for me, there are two things here. Yes, do you reduce it, you know, by maybe 10 or 20%? Maybe. But the it's an estimation, so how, how dense is the bean? Did it absorb more? Did it absorb less? Like the, the process of osmosis, when you brine something, whether it's a meat or a vegetable or otherwise, it actually sucks it into the meat and it actually puts sodium into the structure of the, the, the product itself. So yes, washing the fluid away reduces it if you're eating the fluid, but the solid product itself still has sodium in it. And you're going off a of what if. I, I can't do that. I can't, when I, when my body is so specific about what it reacts to, I can't go off of a, I might have had, you know, 50 milligrams, or I might've had 200 milligrams of sodium in this meal, because there's some people that are so heavily restricted that they're at that threshold of what you need to survive 500 to 750 milligrams of sodium today and a day and anything more than that. And they're, it's they're a problem toast, for them. Yeah. So uh, there's very uh, there's a lot of us that just and I mean I get it if you have a pantry full of stuff and you just got diagnosed with you know a heart condition or high blood pressure or whatever yeah your best bet is to rinse it off soak it in some water for a little bit before you heat it up and then eat it you're gonna mitigate your levels as much as possible and then as you start resupplying your pantry stash you you resupply it with unsalted stuff. You know, I, I'm not saying go throw away everything in your pantry. I gave away all my stuff. My neighbors scored. I was like, here you go. Here's six baskets full of stuff. It's all yours. Soup, vegetables, a whole nine yards. You guys wow. can have it all. Um, so, I mean, well, it's, I mean, if you can't eat it, you can't eat it. Right. So, yeah. And if you are one of those severe, if you're someone like me who came out of the hospital with a, an actual organ failure, that's why I was like, I'm not risking it. 
Yeah. I'm getting rid of all of it. But if it's just a, you know, so my doctor says I should start eating better because I have high blood pressure or whatever, then, then yeah, you know, you just, you rinse it and you go through it and, but it, it doesn't reduce it enough for me to make it worth it. Now we're coming up on about the, yes. the three and a half minute mark. So do you want to reveal the winner of the DAC spices and so, how they get those? Um, I will also private message this person after the show. Um, we will also post it on my Loso Lifestyles page. We will post it on 216 The Nets page um, to make sure that she gets notified. Uh, Cindy Anderson um, is our winner. Cindy Anderson. She posted, she liked, she shared, she did all of that. So I will send her. So she is the lucky recipient of all 19 of Dax Spice Blends. Wow. Uh, once I get her message, she can send me her address and all that good stuff so I can send out her 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 winnings so that she'll get them. So what's the value on that? What what did she win? See, so, you know, if you buy them individually, they're it's it's a lot, but they do have an option to purchase it on their website where you can get the entire nineteen set. Uh huh. And it's about a hundred bucks. Wow, it's a hundred bucks of spices. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, if you go to the grocery so. store, a spice a bottle of spices is anywhere from you know two or three dollars to ten dollars, depending on what you're getting and what blend is in it and who made it and. They have good spices from good source and they're, you know, they've, they've got good product. You know, what's in it, you know what you're getting. And, um, all, like I said, most of the recipes I posted this week were all made with Dax spices. Um, if you want to order them yourself, you can go to Dax spices.com. That's D A K S S P I C E S.com. Dax spices.com. Um, so Cindy Anderson is our winner. Congratulations, Cindy. Um, Very and cool. It's funny because as we were talking about rinsing your food, it, I, uh, you know, those shortcuts, I, I'd rather impart flavor. So I'd rather buy a low sodium product and add yeah. like Dax original red to my green beans yeah, or something of that nature and spice it up myself. Well, and behind you, we've got the Dax yeah. spices logo there and it says, look, ma, no salt, <laughs> all natural, no MSG. So yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah, that, that's so, really pretty cool. Yeah. So Cindy Anderson, I'll shoot you a message here after the show in a couple minutes. Um, we'll get your name and address so we can ship you out your Dax Spice Blend. So we do have uh, what we're going to start here going forward is a is a pantry showcase. So obviously yeah. Dax is our one of our showcase for the week. The other one is Rotel, and a lot of people know Rotel from um, what is that uh, queso? Yeah. From, from making cheese and, and Rotel, and you mix it together, and it makes this nice cheesy queso dip. The Rotel makes a low, a no salt added version, and it's there. You don't get mild, you don't get hot, you don't. Get, it's just a straight up, and it's kind of a spicy one. So if you're someone like you who likes spices, would consider it mild. Somebody oh yeah. Like it's... me, who is sensitive to spice, considers it borderline too much that I can barely have. Oh wow. Um, yeah, Rotel's just pleasant to me. It's not spicy. Right. I wouldn't call it spicy. It's, I'd call it flavorful, but not spicy. But I like my meatloaf. I make my meatloaf with it. I make meatballs with it. I a lot of my one pot dishes that I make that are you know just pasta and meat and tomatoes and whatever I've got to throw in a pan to add some zing to it. I I use the no salt added Rotel a lot in a lot of my recipes. Um, and it makes it absolutely fantastic. So this week's pantry spotlight is obviously our Dax spices, um, and then Rotel because, and together they actually make a really good meatloaf. Awesome. And do you have a meatloaf re recipe over on your Facebook page? I do. Um, yeah, my actually, there lifestyle should be my or lifestyle. Uh, my Loso lifestyle. I'm working on, on the, fa I'm working on the <laughs> website. I'm working so, on the website. It's, right. it's a work in progress. It's a well, work in progress. It's time to wave goodbye, everybody. We'll see you next week, Thursday mm -hmm. at 11 o'clock. Thank you guys. Yeah. One of these days I'm working on it, getting my Facebook is all set now. So I'm working on getting my, uh, my website rolling. But I have the domain. I just got to get everything live. So at least you're saying the right website. It's just nobody can go to it yet. So once everybody can go to the website, we'll have some free advertising. Let's see here. So Cindy, Cindy, Cindy.